He wants to limit who rightly qualifies as his neighbor. Our scripture this morning, our second scripture for this morning, comes from the Gospel of Luke, beginning with the 25th verse. It is a familiar story to us. It is the parable of the Good Samaritan. It, too, is printed in your bulletin for your convenience if you would like to read along with me. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord with your love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The word of God for the people of God. God. I would venture to say that the Good Samaritan is probably one of the most popular Bible stories, one of the most familiar Bible stories. Uh, It's one that most of us learn as children, and then we in turn teach our own children. And it makes a good story for children, right? It's got that good versus evil element to it. It's a simple story. And we as children and our own children can learn about kindness and compassion and even kindness to strangers. And it's important to teach kids those kinds of things, of course, because what we learn as children hopefully forms a foundation for what we will learn later on in life. When I was a student at the University of North Alabama, I signed up to take a a course on early childhood development. And I was excited about taking it because it was held at a preschool that was there on the edge of campus. And so we were going to not just learn about children, but we were going to be able to interact with the children there. The other students and I showed up on the first day of class, and our places were set for us at little tables and little chairs. And on the tables at each place was a sheet of paper, and there were crayons sprinkled along the center of the table. And the teacher's instruction to us was, draw a house. And that was the the only instruction, draw a house. And so the other students and I began to draw, and I I drew my house. It was a two-story house with three windows across the top. On the bottom story was the door in the center with two windows, right? There was a tree on this side and a big sun in this corner and there were flowers in the yard and I drew curtains in the windows. I loved my little house. Well, we all finished drawing and the teacher said, now look at your house. How long have you been drawing 
that house. And we all began to laugh a little bit, maybe out of embarrassment somewhat, because here we were, 19, 20, 21 years old, and we were drawing the same house that we had drawn since we were like six, right? And of course, the teacher's point was, what we learn as children, we carry on into adulthood. Sometimes the Good Samaritan is kind of like that house. We hear it as children, and we hear those good lessons, but then if we don't make that commitment to lifelong learning as disciples, it never becomes more than that, and we miss out <coughs> on the nuances of the story that teach us about God and God's mercy. And so I want us to look at it a little bit deeper today. Let, let's look at it beyond the kindness and the mercy, although that is certainly there, and that's what we want to learn from this story. But there are other things there as well. This story is a scandalous story. The lawyer would have had a hard time listening to this story. Now the lawyer was a scribe. Lawyer was another name for scribe. He was an expert in Mosaic law. He was an expert in interpreting it. The law was his gospel. And how well he obeyed that law was the proof of how faithful he was. And so he knows really the answer before he asks the question. His question is meant to trip Jesus up, to challenge his authority and his insight. But he asks the question, and I love the way Jesus does things. He just throws it right back to him. He says, well, what does the law say? The lawyer has to answer his own question, right? And the lawyer does. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. But then the lawyer asks the second question. Who is my neighbor? And Scripture says that he asks it in order to justify himself. See, he wants to limit who rightly qualifies as his neighbor. He wants to draw a circle around his collection of people whom he must love. And the inference there is that there are going to be people on the other side of that line. There are going to be people that it doesn't demand anything of him to care or to love or show compassion. He wants to draw that circle. And again, in answer to his question, Jesus tells the story of a man who is beaten and robbed and left for dead along the dangerous road between Jerusalem and Jericho. And having driven through that area back in February, it is still a desolate place with hills and valleys and plenty of places for evil to lurk and take advantage of someone. Hearing the story, the lawyer would have been very surprised that the priest and the Levite were not the ones who helped the man. That in itself would have been scandalous. But the lawyer would have been even more surprised, and maybe surprised is a nice way to put it, the lawyer probably would have been angry to hear that it was a Samaritan, one he, he hated so much as the one that Jesus lifted up as the hero of the story. Remember a couple of weeks ago, Tom reminded us how much the Jews and the Samaritans hated one another. Even the disciples, James and John, wanted to wipe them off the face of the earth when a Samaritan village did not receive them. And so when Jesus asked the lawyer to name the neighbor in the story, the lawyer can't even bring himself to say the Samaritan. 
No, he says, the one who showed mercy. Some interpretations use the word kindness. They are the one who showed kindness. And mercy and kindness, that is the key to the story. We are right when we teach our children about kindness. Because, oh, don't we need more kindness. We need more kindness and mercy in our politics. We need more kindness and mercy in our business dealings. We need kindness and mercy in our homes. We need kindness and mercy in the way we think about one another because, you know, if we can't think kindness and mercy, we sure can't act with kindness and mercy. We even need some kindness in the way we treat our environment. The lawyer wanted to learn more about the law. But instead, Jesus wanted to teach him about the gospel. Who is the neighbor? The one who showed mercy. Everything that Jesus said and did taught that the life of discipleship is about more than knowing good from evil. It is about knowing God and understanding God's mercy and how we are to be ministers of that mercy. The Samaritan treats the man as one who is dear to him because love that comes from God does not pick and choose who it loves. God's love creates loving relationships, neighborly relationships. Matthew Skinner, who's professor of New Testament at Luther Seminary, says, the lawyer wants to define who deserves his love. But Jesus' parable suggests that love seeks out neighbors to receive compassion and care, even when established boundaries or prejudices conspire against it. Love seeks out neighbors to receive compassion and care even when established boundaries or prejudices conspire against it. In 1996, the KKK was holding a rally in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And hundreds of protesters showed up that day to tell that organization that they didn't want them in their progressive college town. <clears throat> At one point during that event, a man with an SS tattoo and a t-shirt emblazoned with a Confederate flag ended up on the side of the fence with the protesters. A small group began to chase him, <clears throat> and he was quickly knocked down, and they began to kick him and hit him. Some in the crowd began to yell out, Kill the Nazi! <clears throat> A young 18-year-old girl in that crowd of protesters, fearing that a mob mentality was taking over, rushed from the crowd, and she threw herself on top of that man, protecting him from the blows. He shouted up to the crowd, You can't beat goodness into anybody. Nobody deserves to be hurt, especially for an idea. The young woman's name was Kashia Thomas. African American. The student photographer Mark Bruner, who was there taking pictures of the event, said of Thomas, she put herself at physical risk to protect someone who, in my opinion, would not have done the same for her. 
Who does that? <coughs> Who does that? Who does that? We do that. Disciples of Jesus Christ. This is why we do that. Let me tell you the old, old story. In this parable of the Good Samaritan, it is you and I who are in the ditch. Right? You and I were left for dead in the ditch because of our own stubbornness. God, in his compassion and in his mercy, came to us and picked us up and set us on our feet and sent his son, Jesus Christ, to show us and help us experience a love that is limitless. A love whose depth we cannot fathom. And it is out of that great love that we love. We love because God first loved us. We show mercy because God first showed us mercy. Who is the good neighbor? The one who showed mercy. Jesus said, go and do likewise. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.